Hey, a folk studio here. So today's replay is a replay from Uranium, and we're going to be looking at his Victor. Now, Victor is really cool because no one plays him and no one knows what he does. Like, did you know his ult has a silence effect when he first casts it? I didn't. I had no idea because nobody plays him. Why is Uranium good at Victor? Well, he's a good player. He spent the time and the effort to really learn him and learn his mechanics. And he knows Victor can actually do a lot. I mean, who would have thought? So, Uranium has a guide on solomid.net. I recommend y'all check it out for runes and masteries and his advice word for word. We're going to be looking at it through well, my style and kind of breaking it down and bringing down the game he's in. So, let's jump into this replay. Alright, you guys know what's going to happen first. We're going to see who's playing who. We got Uranium on Victor. Today's game is from his perspective. We also have Champion Mage on Graves, Silsoul on Nidalee, Nat Nguyen rocking on Sona, SF Clacy with the weird accent on Warwick, Jente on Twisted Fate, er Aerodactyl on Lulu, Ken Kyre Moth on Vayne, Zeeves on Lee Sin, Red Koopa on Alistar. I love Ken Kyre Moth. I love that name. That's such a good name. It just sounds so good. Just say it, and look at this funny trick. Aerodactyl got revealed from a trap, so he walks around in this very odd position. What's he doing? I don't know. And he was hoping that Blue Side would try to engage onto him. They'd go, oh, he's alone, let's get him. However, Blue Side was never going to engage on anybody, because they're just trying to ward, and that was a cool trick. It didn't work out. It didn't really cost them anything, though. That's what made it so cool. So right now, Uranium's just helping Warwick do blue, you know, same jungler, fair, help him do wolves, keep his HP high because you don't want a low HP jungler running around and being beaten to death by a blind man. And that ward is actually a really strong ward that they placed. They know Lee Sin is doing red, they're going to have little glimpses of Lee Sin, which will help protect the lanes. And Nat Nguyen is going to get caught here. He's going to check into this bush, and what's in this bush? A very angry cow. That angry cow and that angry um, dragon stalker, what, she, what does Vayne do, are going to kill her, but they're going to overcommit. This is important. Graves has a Doran's Blade. Vayne has boots. So Graves can fight really well. And instead of trying to tumble defensively and get out of there, they stay to fight. And what happens? Graves gets a double kill. Oops. So don't be afraid to back out of fights like that. It's not important to get both kills on a carry and AD. And if you saw right there, that was how Victor trades. He uses his Q to absorb some damage because it produces that small shield. And he uses the E to follow up and harass. If they're going to be trading with you, they're going to be standing in place most likely. So if you can just sync up your E to go off when they're casting a spell, they won't be able to dodge it. However, you'll also be taking damage at the same time, so, you know, it's twofold, but you have a shield. And, sadly, Uranium has to play very, very defensively. So, Lee Sin, he is a terrifying presence in solo queue. A real terror, if you will. What he does is, he ganks so well that you have to play defensively. If Uranium keeps going for these trades, and one of these trades, TF busts out a gold card and stuns him, that blind man can be beating on Uranium while he's in the state of daze and confusion because the cards were just too golden. So he has to play defensively, he can't take risks. And that's not fun to watch, sadly. Um, he does take a few too, too many wild cards, I'm, I'm sorry Uranium, but you just you cannot play poker with Twisted Fate, he's gonna win. But this defensive play, this passive play, is what he needs to do. Something important to note is, Uranium does not get his W at level 4. That's really weird for a lot of people, and I thought it was really weird too. But the truth is, he doesn't need it. What's it going to do for him? It costs a chunk of mana. It's going to lower the damage on either his Q or his E, because he won't have that extra point in there. And it's gonna, only going to allow him to land the Q or land the E. It's not going to really give him anything extra. He'll get an extra auto attack off, sure. But that's not what he needs. He needs poke. 
And it's not too hard to land the QE combo when he's going for a trade anyways. Because, like I said, you can just sync up your spells. And right there you can kind of see that Uranium knows he can't go back too early. He wants to get as much harm as he can. You want to try and either memorize or get really good at uh, addition when it comes to item prices. So, Adoran's ring is 475. That's easy to rem remember. Two Adoran's rings is 950. I and mean, that's what Uranium waited for then. That's why going back then was better than going back later. Now he has his two Doran's rings, two potions. He can apply a bit more pressure. He can spam his spells a bit more. He's got a little extra strength. And something I love from Uranium is that this constant information going out. TF is MIA. TF, he's gone. He's almost 6. Now, obviously, a level 6 TF is very scary. And a level 5, not quite as scary, but he can still gank. He still has gold card. And he can also hit level 6 off of Wraiths, or Golems, or Wolves. So you gotta be careful. You gotta make sure that you're not gonna, you know, make an assumption that he won't get a level somehow. He does it though. He just goes back to buy and comes back, trying to abuse the fact that he had a, a bit of an experience lead. If you saw the score before though, he did not have a gold lead. He's not ahead in CS. And once again, I love this. Um, this is a good combination from Uranium and Nat. TF goes away, he's doing his own TF thing, and you just see pings and retreat pings come out. Because they want to make sure he does not get that awesome pick that TF can do. TF right now is just considered super strong in solo queue, he's a very common ban, and he really just has an amazing presence in the game. Clacy shows up, hits 6, and he's going to do his Warwick thing, he's going to gank. So Lee Sin is scary before 6 and after 6, he's just scary all around. Warwick is super scary once he hits 6. And this is going to be a good display of why uh, Victor is good. We're not even going to see his stun come into play because he doesn't have it. We're just going to see what happens when Uranium uses two skills on a person. and As well as Warwick damage too. So, here comes the ult. Here comes the E. There goes most of Jintae's life. The Ignite's on him too. Had he gotten close enough for the Q, which he just didn't have the time to do, he would have gotten Jintae killed already. Now, the thing is, Victor is not easy to control. A lot happened right there. For example, his cloud from his ult followed that twisted fate. I'm not sure about the very specific key bindings he has, but smart cast is super important on Victor. Some characters you can say, it's like, well, you don't really need it. And some characters like Vagar, you hear a lot of people say, don't use it for the cage. But Victor, use it for his ult at least, because you know what? You can control it super easily and really just, you know, have this extra strength that you normally would, wouldn't would have. So this is a bad steal for two reasons. One, it's defensive. It's in case TF ults, Warwick will be nearby. And two, they really had no idea where they had wards. And Lee Sin was also going to be up to help respond to this. As well as Twisted Fate. So, we don't know if Warwick got spotted on his way to blue, or whether Nat going to blue revealed him. You want to make sure you don't give away too much information with your actions. In that case, Nat going towards blue to support Warwick as he uh, stole blue was actually... That could have been what told Purple Side that Warwick was there. It could have just been that they saw Warwick going in, or it could have just been intuition. Intuition can go pretty far in these games. And... Lee Sin, please, when you do Dragon, bring a pink ward first. If you don't, they might have a ward and they might just kill you super, super fast. Lee Sin dying, however, means that they can do Dragon themselves right there and just wait for Warwick to show up for the smite. They're playing defensively though. Um, bot lane's doing really well. Mid lane's doing really well. The only lane that's not going super well is top, and I think it's because Soul Soul doesn't know what Lulu does. Which is okay, because even I don't really know what Lulu actually does. So, Uranium's now got his Augment Death. He died and he went to buy that. He's got two Doran's uh, rings. Nothing too special. But he's wiping the floor with... Crit, uh, with uh, he's wiping the creep waves with his floor laser. That's, that's, a, that's a weird one to say. And he every time he pokes Twisted Fate, he takes off a third of his HP. 
Now you're going to see he doesn't really go too aggressive on Twisted Fate either. He knows he doesn't need to. He knows that he can keep pushing. He can keep Twisted Fate locked in position. Just trying to farm up creep waves. And, you know, not ganking. If Twisted Fate ganks, he'll lose a ton of CS. He'll, he might lose the tower. And Victor can always show up and uh, help gank. Also, bot lane is now doing super well just because of the uh, the kills Graves has gotten. So ganking them will be difficult. Nidalee is just a hard gank on her own. He's not too scared of Twisted Fate ganks right now, which is understandable. And he wants to enter team fight phase strong. Why? Because Purple Side has crappy team fight. Lulu's good in team fights, but doesn't do a lot of damage. TF can you know do a lot of burst to one person, but doesn't do a whole lot of damage in general. And Vayne is not going to be super, super Vayne mode yet. It's going to take a while for Vayne to hit that strength, hit that peak, because she did not have a strong early game. So he knows that if he goes in team fights powerful, that's all they need to win the game. However, the enemy team has these strong picks, and he wants to avoid getting caught out by Lee Sin, caught out by TF, caught out by these strong heroes that are really good at taking down one person very suddenly. Now, once again, look at the, the effect W has in this gank. Look for it. Look for it. As you can see, by the way, the cloud's already following Twisted Fate. He's very, very spot on about keeping his cloud on people. I don't actually know if you can uh, if you can click to just keep it on people, but in general, you want to move it around. If the target you have it on dies, make sure it's going to someone else. Make sure it's just, you know, doing its thing, constantly moving around and doing damage. But what part did his W have in that entire gank? Um, nothing. He didn't do anything. I mean, he didn't need to use it. He didn't, he didn't even use Ignite. Partially, that was Warwick's damage. It wasn't just uh, Victor on his own. But that's how much it does. So this exchange here, um, this is just the power of Twisted Fate. They weren't really out of position in any traditional sense of being out of position. They were out of position in the sense that Twisted Fate can be everywhere very quickly. He just respawned and he immediately went bottom to get this gank off. That Sona ult probably saved Champion Mage, but there wasn't a lot he could do. However, that's all for part one. I'll see that I'll see y'all in part two where we can uh, look at how Victor does in some of the bigger team fights. Adios.